Dear friends, a very good afternoon and welcome to this webinar on Lean Manufacturing for Global Quality. This webinar is a part of our series focusing on quality systems, techniques and processes that can significantly impact productivity and manufacturing efficiency at the workplace. Lean Manufacturing is a, is a great interest to manufacturers throughout the world. Companies of all sizes are applying Lean principle and are realizing dramatic improvements in product quality, productivity, customer service, and uh, profitability. Lean manufacturing is a production philosophy, a way of mapping the overall manufacturing process from raw material to finished goods all the way to the customer. It is called Lean because this principle helps a manufacturer to produce more with less. That means less time, less inventory, less capital, and fewer resources. The webinar will give you an overview of tried and tested lean manufacturing principles with practical tips for implementation. The webinar will be conducted by Mr. Okhiles Singh, a well-known quality expert with over four decades of experience and he brings you to years of knowledge backed up by practical guidance for implementation of these techniques. I also encourage you to ask him all the questions by typing them out and he will answer them during the course of the session. Best wishes over to the, our presenter, Mr. Akhilesh Singh. Thank you, Sanjay. <coughs> Very good afternoon, to friends. I'm back again. You must have heard me during last three, four sessions on the zero defect, zero effect, 5S, and the Kaizen. I believe it must have added some value to your practices and knowledge. Now, I come to the, the most demanded subject today in the world is the lean manufacturing by all the industries. This was invented and developed by Toyota as a Toyota production system. Now it is called as lean manufacturing. In almost every country, all kinds of industries, whether small, medium or large, trying to learn and implement lean manufacturing to improve the global competitiveness of their products and services. So in this webinar, I'd like to give you an overview of lean manufacturing, how it can be applied in the small and medium industries for their profitable growth. So during this presentation, you are welcome to ask any question you are free to interrupt at any time. You can just type your questions in your computer. I'll read in my computer and clarify the questions as and when it comes up. See, the whole purpose of this series of webinars is to improve the manufacturing excellence in all the small, medium, industries of country. So <clears throat> every small or medium enterprise has potential to become multinational organizers. So how to become, how to grow, that depends on the kind of management systems you are following and the competence of your people who are managing the business that helps any company to grow. So every small company has become, has a potential to become the large multinational organizers. There are so many examples in our country. You'll find the Reliance is one of the best examples, which has become one of the largest organizations in the country, which was having about 40 years back. It started with a very small entity. So that is possible with every small and medium company. So any activity begins with clarity of a goal. So what is the goal of your organization? It must be clear. It is not just profit, rather it is a profitable growth. Growth, not only in the money terms, it is in addition to the financial growth, it must grow the brand value. It must grow in the competence of the people. It must grow in technology upgradation of the company. So the growth is the main goal of any organization. 
So here we have to see how to make growth happen in the companies. So what is essential for growth is that basically in the global market, whoever is more competitive, that is a demanded by the customer. Today, you must be seeing that all countries products are in our market and our not only in India, but throughout the world, every company is competing, whether it is a small electrical item, electronic item or heavy engineering item. So here the what is the key to make the company competitive is the competitiveness. So if we want to grow, whether it is a small company or big company, we have to increase the global competitiveness of the company. Today, especially in our situation in India, we are facing a tough competition. Especially in the consumer products, engineering products, which is being used day to day by the domestic customers as well as industrial buyers. Who is the main competitor? I'm sure that everybody will come with the name of China. China has become the greatest competitor for Indian market and we are facing the problem in market every day. Our export compared to China is less than 25% what China is doing with us. So there is a big imbalance, trade imbalance between China and India. They are exporting more than three times than what we are exporting to them. So this is a challenge and gradually it is expanding in every industrial sector. So the first thing we have to know, why China is more competitive? What's your guess? Why, what makes Indian product less competitive than China? I think you must have thought over, but now this has become very, very important to know why we are less competitive and how to overcome that weakness of competitiveness so that we can compete with China, not only in our country, but in the export market also. So if we just analyze it, in every product, there are three components are there in the cost components. One is the cost of product, which is actually the material and conversion cost spent in the industry. Then a lot of waste, which has got no meaning. And over that, there is a profit margin. If we just see in this particular graphic, compared to China, our quantum of waste is much higher that is making us less competitive. So we are spending more money on producing that product then over adding the profit margin, then it becomes much more overall selling price becomes more than the China. That is the main cause of losing our competitiveness in comparison to the China. So to increase the competitiveness, what we should do? The today, the best solution to increase our competitiveness is the lean manufacturing. So it's not only in India, throughout the world it has been recognized. The future of manufacturing is going to be lean. So any company who wants to increase their competitiveness and grow their business, they have to learn and adopt lean manufacturing. So Realizing the importance of lean manufacturing today, this particular webinar is put so that people can come to know. So, comes to the mind, what is a lean manufacturing? Basically, <clears throat> it is not just a tools, techniques, but it is a thinking differently. If we want to bring improvement in our business, irrespective of the size of the company, whether it's small, medium or the large, what we need to change is thinking differently. The lean manufacturing is a different way of thinking. So it has to begin in the mind of the people. <clears throat> Here, 
I am glad to share the wisdom given by one of the, our great icon, the learned Gautam Buddha. What he has taught, we are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thought, we make. With our thoughts, we make our world. So the basically, whatever we are seeing, the physical product, it originates from our thought. As Lord Buddha taught, if we want to improve our business or our life, we have to start to bring change in our thinking. So the lean manufacturing is basically begins with bringing a new way of thinking which can improve the products process and the people's quality <coughs> so, <coughs> so so it is described as lean manufacturing is a way to determine value sought by the customers provide value through an end-to-end -end processes by engaging everyone touching the value value stream to minimize the waste variations and overburden throughout the value stream. So the basically it's a quality is no more enough. We have to go beyond the quality. We have to supply value to the customer and who will create the value all the people who are engaged in creating the product right from beginning to end. Everyone has to change their thinking improve their competence and adopt a new way of working to deliver what customer wants to attain the lean manufacturing principles. The core idea of lean is to maximize the customer value. As I told, the quality management is not enough now. People industry have to run the value management where the quality is one of the subsets of value. So main approach here we have to enhance the value of our products and services and how it can be done by minimizing the waste. Many of you must be curious why it is called lean. As you understand, lean means thinner, smarter, with less fat. Exactly the same view is adopted in naming this name of this method. Why it is called lean? Because it uses less human effort to produce the same product. It requires less material, less space, less capital and less time to make a product or services which has got a far less cost with much fewer defects compared with traditional business system. The best example of lean is the Toyota Motor Corporation. In the 1950s, it was making just 11,000 trucks. Today, it is producing almost 10 million vehicles and serving all the citizens throughout the world. In every country, you will find the Toyota products, which is well accepted. Mm -hmm. So, this lean manufacturing is based on the experiences of Toyota which has emerged as one of the best producers of the world. So why you should adopt lean manufacturing? You mm -hmm. must know the benefits of lean manufacturing. So that will convince everyone to learn and beginning. So any business, the biggest challenge, especially mm -hmm. in today's global competition is the cost competitiveness. So you have to continuously mm -hmm. reduce your cost along with the improvement in the quality. How it can be done? The, from the lean perspective, the very first thing, the inventory management. Mm -hmm. By building more inventory, you are helping the banks to get more interest on working capital. Then how it can be reduced just in time production, which is a proven method of the Toyota. Improve production planning process it improves purchasing process and reduce change over time. So these are the various techniques of lean, which helps to reduce the cost. Then the next important thing is the quality improvement. The lean manufacturing focuses on the defects and goes its techniques, A3 thinking, 
Gaijin and problem solving techniques, they help you to reach to the what is the root cause behind the defect and helps the people to <coughs> improve their processes to eliminate the root cause so that the quality improvement takes place more. <coughs> Third most important thing is on time delivery. Incidentally, based on various data, most of the Indian companies, they are very poor in the on time delivery. This is a, maybe a cultural problem or whatever reason. So here, the lean manufacturing focuses on the customer value and on time deli delivery is one of the very important parameters of customer value. It must be made in time. So just in time is one of the very effective and proven technique which helps companies to produce and deliver on time. Next is that any industry, the equipment is one of the very, very important aspect of it. Of the four M's, man, material, methods and machines. If your equipments are not healthy, they cannot deliver the good quality product. They cannot produce just in time. As per the customer requirement, they can't produce economically. So the lean manufacturing focuses on the equipment health so that it is available all the time in good condition and helps to produce and deliver products on time at the minimum cost. The next benefit is that workplace. This is one of the basic requirement. Every industry or the office or the school or the civil places, they must be clean and well organized. One of the very famous tools, 5S, I'm sure most of you must be following also and everybody must be aware about the 5S, is one of the very powerful Japanese techniques which helps the organizations to keep the soft load clean, organized, safe, efficient and productive. So the 5S has to be become a way of life every employee of the company must learn and practice and put it in behavior to keep the company in a clean and good working condition. <coughs> the people of any organization, whether it is a big or small, are the most important and most valuable asset. Actually, the quality, productivity, Profitability is created by the people. How they can do it? They should have an ability to perform it. And there are three components are there to develop the ability or competence of the people, the knowledge, the skill, and the attitude. So how to develop it? It has to be developed by training, by coaching, and by putting those principles in action. The lean manufacturing focus is maximum on the development of the people so that they can learn the lean tools, they can practice the lean techniques to deliver the people and they develop a mindset. As I told in the beginning, lean has to begin with the thinking, change in the thinking. So the thinking of every employee right from the CEO to the bottom most, junior most person must change <clears throat> to improve it. So maximum emphasis on developing the competence of people which helps to deliver, produce and deliver the better product. Question on Kasekulani. Question on Kasekulani. <clears throat> if you are having any question about this one, please type in your computer, I'll do. So, <clears throat> for making a good company, the culture is one of the very important things. Culture creates an environment where everybody starts thinking and acting. So the work culture, the lean manufacturing is basically brings work culture, a new type of work culture. Some question has come. 
So lean manufacturing helps you to bring change in the culture of the organization so that everybody gets influenced and people start behaving with the same habit, same way of thinking. So how to build the culture? It is a putting principles in action that changes the culture. Just like in army, Indian army, if you see, the people are coming from all parts of the country, from the different kind of religion, caste, creed, but because of the culture and how everybody starts thinking, working and practicing the same pattern of behavior. So how it is happening? By the training, by changing their mindset and by putting those principles in practice, everybody becomes the same kind of person. So the same way the lean manufacturing can create a positive culture in every kind of organization where all employees are in continuously involved in making things better. So we just summarize what are the benefits of lean manufacturing. It brings down the cost, which is very important for profitability and the cost competitiveness of your products. It reduces lead time right from order to production to delivery lead time has to be reduced. Longer the lead time means longer the more the cost. So just by compressing the lead time, you bring down the cost. It reduces work in process requirement. It, even in some companies, it has gone down up to 80%. It requires the less floor area for soft floor. Today, the land and space has become very, very expensive up here. So this is a very important aspect. In lesser space, we can produce more. It brings flexibility. Because you might be observing even because of demonetization, demand has come down. But after this, suddenly demand will come up. So flexibility that helps to cope up with the fluctuations in the demand, which is beyond control of any organization. It improves quality significantly. And most important part, employee involvement and satisfaction that goes up. People are better informed. and they get more involved. So these are some of the important benefits of lean manufacturing, why the, all the industries across the world are trying to learn and implement it. <clears throat> so before uh, trying to understand what is lean manufacturing, let's understand what is the history and evolution of lean, how it has emerged and why it has become. So if you just See this particular diagram. All the production system of the world can be classified in three major categories. One is the craft production, second is the mass production, and third is the lean production. So all these companies in the world following either of these three systems. So how evolution of lean has taken place in the beginning of 19th century or end of 19th century let's take example of car so that all industries have learned the production techniques so that earlier the cars were produced by the craft production technique where all technicians and operators were coming at one point with a different component and fixing the cars so it was made at one time. So the limitation was there. It cannot produce consistent quality. The production was very low. Demand was much more than the production capability of the company. Quality was inconsistent. Cost was very high. And the industry was not able to meet the demand of the customers. It was throughout the world. So to overcome this problem, the Henry Ford he brought an innovative technique, the moving assembly line, where the operators were st standing at that workstations with the different components and the job was moving on an assembly line <coughs> step by step where the each component was being assembled. That brought great revolution in the 
industrial development of the world. Which help in bringing the consistency of the quality, bigger quantum of production to meet the different demand, different quantity of the demand required by the customer, brought down the cost. So a lot of convenience was added in the production system. The mass production system actually changed the whole industrial world of the all countries. It brought the economy of scale. <clears throat> but by end of 20th century, all of us have experienced during 2008 and 2009, there was a global meltdown. <clears throat> Big crisis started throughout the world in the industry. The production became more than the demand. There were less buyers, more producers, as still we are facing. Why it was happening? It was because of mass production concept and the economy of scale. The companies in speculation, there will be demand in the future. They started producing more product than the required, irrespective of the orders booked. And finally, it saturated at the end of 20th century the company started realizing the impact of it, of the poor cash flow. Poor cash flow and the whole world business realized its impact. So this concept was realized by Two gentlemen from Toyota company, the Kichiro Toyota, the owner of the Toyota Motors and their chief engineer, Tai Chi Yun. They studied the mass production concept of the Henry Ford and they realized two main problems. Because of the bigger batch size and mass production, they used a very big inventory. And the second problem was that Customers, they had limited choice because of the bigger inventory, big size, and the limited variety. So realizing these two things, bigger by size, bigger inventory, and the lesser variety, the Tai Chi Ono and Kichiro Toyota, they developed, they modified the Henry Ford's production system, where small variety, was converted to large variety and the larger inventory was reduced by small batch size with less inventory. So the mass production of Henry Ford was modified as a large variety with low inventory. So this way, the more variety was given, more options were available at lower cost to the customers by the Toyota. By the beginning of 21st century, the Toyota production system was known and it was given name of lead management by two MIT professors, James Somak and Daniel Jones, which is now being followed by whole world to produce large variety good product as per the customer requirement with the lesser resources. That's why it is called as lean manufacturing. So this is the craft production I have discussed. This is the evolution of mass production, 27. The Toyota production system. So it was a mass production system was modified to Toyota production system, which is now called as lean manufacturing. After the success of Toyota, And the popularity of Japanese management system, government of India also realized that it must be promoted in our country. So the first chairman of Maruti company, Dr. V. Krishnamurti, he was made by the previous government as chairman of 
cost competitiveness committee which main mission mission was to increase the competitiveness of indian products especially smes to make it globally competitive so he realized the benefits of lean manufacturing and made an scheme handed over to ministry of msme to promote the lean manufacturing especially in msmes through a cluster system so since 2009 the cluster system is going on where thousands of smes they have benefited by the lean manufacturing implementation incidentally i was involved <coughs> in the first phase in 2009 then also implementing lean manufacturing in smes and still continuing in the many clusters and which is a benefiting the smes to improve their management system so the, the toyota production system which is a name was changed and modified by mit professor as lean management system or lean manufacturing system which has got a special characteristic to produce best quality product in the lowest cost in the shortest lead time and how they can do it by elimination of waste and the two main pillars of lean manufacturing are following the just in time and jidoka these are the two techniques and then bringing stability in the day to day operations through kaizen and various techniques which already we have discussed in previous seminars and we'll be dealing in the future webinars so <coughs> so these two gentlemen james omek and daniel jones they are the promoter of the lean manufacturing in today's world the must by they wrote two books the machine that changed the world and lean thinking through these books whole world has come to know fortunately i had opportunity to learn lean manufacturing from daniel jones in his academy in uk okay let's try to understand what is lean manufacturing i am sure everybody must be aware about four m's that is throughout the world in every industry whether it is small big or large irrespective of size and product they use four m's which is known as materials machine manpower and methods to convert any product to in the industry so the four m's so in any process production process four m's are essential to convert them with the need convert them into the desired product so during this process operations there are two main things are being done by the man and machine either <coughs> they are <coughs> adding value to the <coughs> working process and generating waste the value and the waste these two things are being generated in the process so this was realized by and seen by third eye of tai chi ho he realized that means we have to focus on two things either value value adding activity and waste generating activities and he realized to improve profitability customer value we have to minimize waste that is going to help reduce the cost improve productivity improve profitability improve customer satisfaction this was seen by tai chi ono and he focused on elimination of waste this is the most important aspect of lean manufacturing so what is the value we have to learn value and interpret in our product and service offerings so this is defined as the inherent worth of a product as judged by the customer and reflected in the selling price and market demand so the value has to be determined by the customer so it is a capability provided to customer through the product of highest quality delivered just in right time and without any chasing without any hassle the value has to be delivered and at an competitive price so the four keywords as i indicated here the first thing 
for value is the quality must be world class. It must be competitive. It must be delivered at the exact time as desired by the customer. And third, most important aspect is the delivery of product should be hassle free. In our, especially Indian conditions, if we place order, the customer has to continuously chase and remind the supplier to deliver the product in time. So it should be free from any hassle for changing that enhances the value. And at the end, it must be competitive. They should be fair price. It's not necessary fair price is not just minimum price. It must be value for the money. So these are the four keywords are the quality, on time delivery, hassle free delivery and the competitive price. These are the four aspects of value need to be addressed. So the two things we are creating in our process are the value and the waste. Now the focus comes on the waste. Just by minimizing the waste, we can improve the value. So the Taichi Yono, the chief of Toyota Motor Corporation, he could see the waste most seriously and classified in eight categories. Overproduction, motion, inventory, transportation, waiting, underutilized people, defects and overprocessing. So the lean manufacturing basically tries to see, detect what are the waste being generated in every process and find solutions to get rid of these waste. This is the key aspect of the lean manufacturing. I'll be discussing what are the various kinds of waste and how they are interpreted. Overproduction. It is a producing without order faster or earlier than the required. In Indian industries, especially, we produce more than the requirement without even the confirm order and that becomes ultimately inventory. So the first thing we have to overcome the our current culture of overproduction. This is even a Tai Chi, you know, he told that overproduction is one of the major region of all other waste. We have to produce exactly what is needed by the customer, neither less nor more. So the first thing to be adapted is without a confirmed order, there should not be production. Second is the motion <coughs> implies the people involved in production process, they have to move here and there. And during that movement, they exhaust their physical energy, mental energy, that must be minimized. In any production process, it has to be, the layout has to be made, or the production sequence has to be made, the operator friendly, so that the minimum motion is required, that will preserve their energy and improve the personal productivity of the people. Inventory is another problem. Unfortunately, inventory is taken in our balance sheet as an asset. That should, in fact, it is not an asset. It is a liability from the lean aspects. It is causing waste. It is adding cost. It is just helping the invest, investment bankers to block more money and we are seeing a lot of non-performing assets which are in fact the inventory of the assets which is just wasting the resources. So inventory has to be minimized. Then transportation, excessive movement of people, information or material on the soft floor because any movement of material on the man that consumes energy that consumes time, that consumes effort. So the layout has to be improved in such a way that minimum transportation is required. The waiting, the time is one of the very important dimensions of the lead because a lot of time is wasted on soft floors. If you'll we'll find, just analyze, if there are three things are required, the man, material and machines for any production activity. Many times we find out of these three, two are available, but third is not there. Other people and machine are ready, but there is no material. 
or the machine or the material is ready, operator is missing. So a lot of time is wasted. So this impacts in the productivity. It causes delay and increases cost. Next waste is untapped human potential. The lean beliefs, the real expert of any process is the people who are touching the process, who are operating the machines, they are the real experience. But most of the industries throughout the world, human beings are used as an operator, as another mechanical part of the machine. We never try to utilize their experience and knowledge for the improvement activities. So this is one of the greatest ways recognized by the lean producing companies and they try to use their experience and knowledge by improvement project taken as a Kaizen project so that they can utilize their rich experience for improving the quality of product and services. So these are the various <coughs> types of waste. The defect is already one known. The quality management has helped in improving the defect, okay. reducing the defect and improving the quality. But most of other, most of the other defects, other other waste mentioned in the lean are less addressed. Another is the over processing. If you just take example of a writing check in a company. There are so many signatures are required, so many approvals are required, which can be done in lesser step. The same way in the production process, most of the process you will find that unnecessary steps are being used, which is taking time, which is taking effort, which is costing money, which can be simplified in lesser steps. So, how much it costs to the company? In fact, a global survey was conducted by one of the very famous Juran Institute, who was Juran was one of the gurus of quality, and they found that in most of the Indian industries, average industries, 15 to 30 percent of the turnover is the cost of this. Whatever is your turnover, I am sure that almost about 25 to 30 percent of the turnover is being wasted. So this much potential is there by lean manufacturing, one can reduce their costs in the range of 50 to 30 percent based on their maturity of implementation. Now comes how to reduce the waste. So the lean manufacturing uses three step process. First is the detection of waste, the second elimination of waste and the prevention of waste. Just like in our health, you might have seen the average age throughout the world has increased. In spite of much, much increased disease, why it is happening? <coughs> because our detection of problems has become much easier. A lot of technology has come in the diagnostic of a disease. The same way a diagnosis is required to identify what are the problems of in the production process which is causing generation of waste. So there are various tools which help to detect waste. Then second comes the remedial journey. Once you have identified the waste, there must be some cause. So a different set of tools are required to reach to the root cause and find a solution and implement it. Third is that once we have improved the health of our process, then we have to make sure that it must be prevented not to reoccur. How it can be done? By changing the culture, by implementing the system. So different side of type of tools are required to implement. So these are the three steps detection, elimination and prevention of waste which must be practiced by the companies to become globally competitive and make continuous growth of their products.
how it is done based on the research of Toyota's working, the MIT professor, they codified their practices in five principles, which are the <clears throat> key to the lean manufacturing. In, in fact, the putting these five principles in practice is the implementation of lean manufacturing. What are these five principles? First is specify value from customer's perspective. So first is we must know what value our customer wants. Traditionally, what we do, any product is designed by the design engineers of the company, produced by <coughs> production and quality people, where the role of experts is more. But now the lean says we have to get the specification made by, made or described by this customer. What exactly customer wants, that has to be specified. It's not exactly what designer wants. So the customer voice has to be converted into designer's voice, which has to be produced in the third thing. So the first thing is we must know what value customer wants. The second principle, identify the value stream for each product and remove the rest. We have to map and identify all the process right from beginning to end and try to discover what is the preventing flow of the product and that must be eliminated. Third principle is make the value flow <clears throat> without interest, interruption from beginning to end. So by elimination of waste, to enhance the value of the product, <clears throat> it must flow without any interruption. The moment any interruption takes place, so the waste starts generating. The fourth is let the customer pull value from your process. Overproduction is one of the main problems of the increasing cost is we must produce only at the signal of the customer against the demand only production should be made your system should be made so sensitive so that whenever the demand comes immediately known to the company and it should produce and the fifth one is the pursue perfection is this is not a one-time activity continuously we have to go and improve so that the perfection is always improved to the next degree. So these five principles putting in practice is the implementation of lean manufacturing. Let's see. First principle is the specify value. Just like in restaurant, <coughs> better they come to the us, they come to the customer and try to find out what exactly we are looking for. So, what is enhancing the value? Four factors, quality, speed, experience, and cost. These are the four important factors which increases the value and what reduces the value. Value distress are the defects, delays, poor response, high cost. So exactly the same way, we must try to know what customer is looking for and try to make it in the value stream. What is the value stream? Right from all the activities, right from the booking of order till the product is delivered in the hands of the customers. So customer order, booking, order entry, design, production planning, purchasing, production, shipping, delivery to customer, all this has to be seen in one, <clears throat> as a value stream, all horizontal activity. So we have to see that all these activities are performed without any interruption so that the product is delivered without any delay. How to make it <clears throat> flow? Just as you see the design, production, delivery, there should not be any delay in this particular activity, especially at interfaces. If you just see the two bars with the red and green blocks, the current lead time, order to delivery time, which was four weeks, and the red one is showing the waste generating activities by the lean, that could be reduced to two week time just by eliminating non-value adding or the waste generating activities. So this is the approach of lean is used to make the value flow faster. 
Then the fourth one is create pull from the customers. Just like in our car, whenever our car or the scooter indicates the reserve value, so a pull is created by the car. Now I want more fuel. And based on that pull, you go to the petrol pump and get it filled up. And filled up in the required quantity as per the capacity of your fuel tank. Exactly the same approach has to be applied in a production process. It should be customer driven, not the production driven, depending on the pull, exactly the same quantity you have to produce. And once it is produced, the purchase should buy the material in the same proportion and their main supplier, they should supply it. So this is becomes a, a chain. So the production process should be driven by the pull in against the conventional method of push production where the production planning decides how much has to produce. So this is the pull factor is very important. And the fifth principle, as I mentioned, it is a continuous journey. The lean is not a destination. It is a journey. It has to continuously improve so that we can go on improving every day towards perfection. So I have mentioned the three step approach for implementing lean is the detection of waste. Second is the elimination of waste and third is the prevention of waste. <coughs> so how to do it? We need different type of tools. So the lean tools and techniques can be classified in three categories. Tools for the waste detection, tools for the waste elimination, and tools for the waste prevention. So these tools has to be learned by the people who are involved in the production process and all the kind of process, and they have to apply they have to improve their system with these tools so that waste is continuously minimized. So there are various kinds of tools and it starts as you see in this diagram while the stream mapping is like a, our medical science use cat analysis where a cat analysis whole body is passed through a machine and anywhere blockage in our system, in the arteries, in our vein system, that is detected. It is a so powerful tool. While stream mapping tries to detect any blockage in the flow of process. It's a really, I personally found the most potent, most powerful tool to detection of any problem. The first thing has to be done by value stream mapping, wherever the problems are there, nature of problem has to be discovered. And accordingly, various kind of tools are plant layout change, visual management, fire system, standardized work, batch reduction, team working, quick changeover, point of use store, quality at source, Kanban, cellular flow, TPM. There are so many tools are there as per the different stages and different needs appropriately it has to be learned and applied in the system to eliminate the causes of waste. Every company has got a vision and sure that every financial year one makes a target for a 10 to 20 percent growth in the company. Here as it is shown at current state we are let's find at 100 crores. Next year I want to achieve 125 crores. These two are known, but what is the problem? That's not known. What are the obstacles? Nobody knows. It's very easy to make the targets, but <coughs> how to achieve the target? What is holding the targets is the obstacles, which is a visible, not visible. So the first thing has to be done. What are the obstacles? If you just see here, the vision is there for the continuous growth then the target we have made for that next year and I know what is my actual current performance. So the first thing, what is a blocking to attain our target that has to be identified for his, which 
a diagnostic study is needed to discover the problem as shown here. So we need a tool. So once problem is known, then different kind of tool is required. How to eliminate that problem? It is basically problem is nothing but a gap. Uh, so a very famous technique of quality improvement or the problem solving is called a PDCA, the four stage journey, plan, do, check and diet. That is a technique which in, uh, involves various kinds of tools at different stages used to attain the future vision. So the Kaizen in the previous webinar, I conducted a webinar on the Kaizen. In fact, the Kaizen you are seeing the Kaizen Guru Masaki Humai. He made Kaizen known to the whole world. He is currently 84 years old. He authored two books, Gemba Kaizen. He gave the name, branded name Gemba Kaizen. Gemba means place of work where value is created. So the Kaizen is to be conducted. Kaizen is a continuous improvement has to be made at the Gemba where the value creation activity is being done. Gemba is not just only factory software, your design department is a Gemba, your purchase department is a Gemba, wherever you are doing a value adding activity, that is a Gemba. So he taught five golden rules for the Gemba. First, go to the Gemba, means where the value creation is done. It should not be decided what are the problems in the conference room. Rather, you go to Gemba and see it. Check Gemba C. Item at Gemba has to be checked by the person to know the problem. Once problem is known, take temporary measures just like first aid, immediately you do. Then later on, you must take detailed study to, root, to find the root cause and eliminate it. And finally, once it is eliminated, standardized to prevent recurrence of the problem. So the PTCA, plan, do, check, act are the four step journey for making improvement. <coughs> As I mentioned, 5S, most of you must have heard and many of you might be practicing also. What our Prime Minister has started, in fact, the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, all of us know, it is nothing but the tool for Swachh Bharat is 5S. Same way, Swachh Factory Abhiyan, you can do 5S because 5S is essential for the safety, for the productivity, for the pleasant working condition. So how, what are these five S? Is the five step named with a Japanese word. First one is the sort. The S1 is called Siri from the Japanese word, means you have to classify all the items lying on the floor or the workplace or the needed and not unneeded item. So, all unneeded items, not needed items should be removed from the soft floor. So, this is where it is going to remove the clutter. It is going to free a lot of space. And after the unneeded items are removed, then whatever the required items, they must be set in order. The second desk means properly put in place so that whenever is needed immediately, immediately you can do you can get it. There is a question has come. What do you mean by POUS point of use store? The POUS is means point of use store. Means you must keep material, required small quantity material where it is being used. Just I am giving an example. Somewhere the nuts and bolts are being used at the assembly line. In your main store, it is a purchased in a bulk, but you cannot transfer everything at the point of use store. So the daily requirement may be 100 units are required, for example, every day. So that must be available within the reach of the operator so that he is not wasting time. This way transportation and waste motion waste is minimized and time to bring the material is Eliminated. So the point of use store is a mini store at your place of work. So the 5S 
first set in order. Whatever the needed item that must be put in order. And example, as I gave point of use store is one of the very good example of S2. Then all the items which have been organized, they must maintained clean, sign we free from dirt or any damage. Every day it must be cleaned and kept in good condition. And the fourth S is first three S1, S2, S3 are the daily practice activity. And fourth one is standardized, making the rules for the 5S. So this is an intellectual activity which has to be done. And fifth S is creating a culture of 5S. Just, you just see before and after 5S, the same items, how these were kept in the before condition and now organized in a systematic way. Anybody can pick up whenever it is needed. So <coughs> this is the 5S which need to be practiced in the company. In fact, it is called 5S is the foundation for the league. Without 5S, it is not possible to make a continuous improvement. So the countries, they must start. Companies must start the 5S practice. <coughs> As I mentioned in the beginning, in the Ford system, they used to big inventory because it was taking some of the dyes in the car manufacturing was taking 10 and a half time. The 10 and a half hours to change one dye, especially the car body making dyes, doors and the main body making dyes were taking more than 10 and a half hours. So because of long dye change time, the Ford used to have a long batches. The same way bigger machines, bigger dyes, they require a lot of time for change of their bodies, dyes, whenever one item is changed to another item. The same thing was noticed by Taichi Ono and another engineer, Sijio Singo, who studied this item and he brought 10 and a half hours die change time to less than 10 minutes. That's why it is called single minute exchange of die. In fact, single digit minute exchange of die, which was taking more than 10 hours die change time. It was brought down less than 10 minutes. This is a revolutionary technique which has helped Toyota to reduce the inventory by changing to the small lot size. And this is one of the turning point for success of Toyota. So the same die change time in every company changeover is required. It can be learned by the small and big companies and it can bring a significant improvement in the availability of the equipment. Jidoka is called as giving intelligence to machine. If we just see these three figures, <clears throat> the first machine, the machine is same, product is same. What is being done, the operator is manually feeding and watching the machine and collecting the product. Loading, unloading and watching, that was the job. The second machine, some improvement was done, some Jidoka was applied, intelligence machine was given. So automatic feeding was there, made. But again, the operator is just watching the machine. And when the bin is full, he is receiving. In third, miss, especially he is checking any defective is coming. So immediately he is trying to take help. The same machine, further advanced, for, further intelligence was given. There was automatic feedback was, automatic feeding mechanism was there and automatic ejection was there. And intelligence was given the machine to monitor it. Once the bin is full, immediately it automatically gives a signal, stops production, gives signal by alarm and the light. So the operator comes. So it has become free from the operator. So the same machine, it is a free from the operator. <coughs> Excuse me. Whenever the bin is full, only the operator comes and changes the bin. So the intelligence to the machine is given. It is a belief 
in the Japanese philosophy. Human being can err, they can make mistake, but the machines will not. As long as machine is working properly, it will not mistake, make a mistake. How it can be done? By putting the judoka, giving some intelligence to the machine, it can perform. Another thing, another tool is the Kanban. <coughs> Kanban is a system. When the product is required, then only the machine operates. When it is a full, it is already we are doing in our overhead water tanks. Every day, what is happening? The morning, evening, our water supply departments, they make a supply. The moment the, your tank is full, there is a float that puts, closes the wall. So automatically supply to the tank is stopped. The same way, the same system can be applied in our production process. Because once we have required inventory, specified inventory is there, then the production should automatically stop. So system should give the, the give the information to the production process whether to produce or not rather than the individual. So this is called as a full production. It's one of the very, very powerful method to control the inventory. Another tool, the prevention of mistakes, prevention of waste is called the mistake proofing or error proofing, a technique which is used by making some intelligence in the machine automatic control system to prevent the mistakes so that defectives are not produced. In the beginning, I told the four M's are important in any production process. The material, methods, manpower and machines. So, to produce good quality, it is equally important. Our machines are healthy. This is available all the time. So, how to improve the availability and health of machine that is done by a tool called total productive maintenance. There are so many steps, pillars are there. So by maintaining, applying the TPM, which is more popular as TPM technique, applying we can improve the availability, performance and quality produced by the machines. So this is a tool for <coughs> continuous improvement. So far we have discussed what is the lean, what is the lean and what are the various tools which are essential for the lean manufacturing. Now let's come to the how to put in practice. This is the most tough but not impossible task. So putting that Lean tools, lean thinking, lean principles and practice is called as lean transformation. <coughs> it is beyond the implementation. <coughs> transformation is internal. Unless we have to change our thinking, change our competence, change our mindset, they cannot be transformation. So not just by applying the tools, we have to transform the whole organization, the people, process, system and culture. Just see these four figures you see. Any organization you can just see, all the activities are being performed randomly in different direction. A chaos is there. A chaos happening. So the resultant effort of all activities and the people is in many situations very little positive or in many situations negative. That is happening. So all system and activities are randomly put. Then once you create a vision, we try to make everyone, every process, every person think in a direction. That is a vision does, means puts a target to the people. So what we try to do once vision is made, lean vision is created, then we try to align each process by applying various tools, by Kaizen activities, in a direction of vision, you are seeing the third figure, implementation process we are trying to streamline. 
and the fourth one it is implemented fully transformed everything is organized so different value streams are there all are working in same direction with the same effort without the any creation of waste so in fact the lean transformation is basically transforming a company's company means per persons processes and product from a chaos condition to the well organized unidirection so aligning the thinking of the people with the vision of the organization so this is the lean transformation this will go this will happen in every company once they want to implement the lean <clears throat> so it requires total transformation what is transformation basically organization the people process culture has to be changed to deliver the purpose and what is the purpose of company is the value lean gurus they say any company is created established to create and deliver value to the customer if it cannot deliver value to the customer it doesn't have right to exist so the our thinking has to be changed towards the customer value who is paying the salary to the every employee who is paying contributing towards profit to the company is the customer so customer is in exchange of money they want to buy so the focus of organizations from profit making to change to the value creation for the customer so the if any company is delivering highest value automatically their sales will increase their revenue will go up their profit margins will increase instead of maximizing profit now the lean thinking says we must shift our thinking to maximizing the value one best example i find the apple iphones in spite of being most expensive costliest in the world the maximum customers they are looking for the iphone even the a new model is announced before that booking submit that is being a costliest phone because of the high value everybody wants to buy it willingly so this is one of the very good example of value in the current market so what is a lean transformation basically the foundation if you see in this this is figure is given by the lean gurus lean enterprise should so we have to question our basic thinking the foundation is changing our thinking and two most important things are there how to improve the work how to develop the people we have to develop our people so that their knowledge skill and attitude is aligned towards lean and customer service and based on that we have to improve our work by improving our processes and system where the leadership has to demonstrate a behavior to deliver value to the customer so this is the way how lean transformation need to be done so practically let's see is your company really interested in lean just by answering this checklist you can find out first require is your top management willing to lead the lean if it is yes then only you have to move if it is no there is no sense in wasting time this is the first requirement of lean transformation the ceo or the top most man who is managing the business he must be sincerely willing to lead the lean then only it will be successful once the first question is yes then second is, is there a common language across the whole organization to see the process problems and solve it lean is nothing but it is a better way solving the process problems so there must be common language there are common tools common practice how it can be possible all the people they must learn and practice the problem solving approach based on the lean tools once it is done the next is there a common way to manage lean projects and sustain the results all improvements are done project by project and there has to be common way so the all 
imply they must be skilled by training to how to manage the projects. The Kaizen is the methodology which is used to improve the <coughs> system and the processes. Then next, is there someone responsible for reconfiguring each product value stream across the value chain? Here, the, there must be for each product, each product family, somebody responsible, some senior officer who is made responsible right from taking order till the delivery of the product in hands of customer. The next, is there an effective quality of deployment process based on wireless stream plans to prioritize and this was the whole concept from a departmental management to changes to wireless stream management process. There has to be effective process. Here, all these things need to be transformed, improved by changing the knowledge, skill and attitude of the people that is made possible by proper training, proper coaching, proper practice and proper behavior under the guidance of a lean sensei means a coach, not just trainer, lean coach. So this is the essential requirement for transforming any company who want to adopt the lean. One of the greatest philosophers, Darwin, he says, it is not the strongest of the species that survives, not the most intelligent, but the one most responsive to the change. So here, lean is nothing but a change management. If you are responsive to change, then only you'll survive. And the one great example is the Hindustan Motors. The producers of Ambassador car, they enjoyed almost more than 90% market share in the country, but they did not change with the time and 2014, the company closed forever. There are so many companies, so many examples in the world, those who are not changing in time by adopting the latest practices, latest culture, they'll vanish like dinosaurs. <coughs> what is it? Change management means basically, change management itself is a big challenge. It has to begin with desire to change. Is your company willing to change? If you want to grow, you have to change. If you don't want to grow, you need not change. You will automatically vanish. So the first thing begins with a desire to change. Companies, those who want to prosper and grow in the future, the lean is one of the most effective way to survive and grow in the coming future tough competition. So desire to change, once there is a desire to change, it has to begin from the top, then what to change? Now, that comes from the detection of value stream mapping diagnostic study. Then how to change? The waste elimination techniques, different set of tools are there to make it change. Then making change happen means all the employees, they must be trained how to implement the lean techniques. So they will make the change happen. Finally, the sustaining change is the cultural issue. You have to make an issue. You have to make the culture, which is continuously practicing the improvement. So this is the cycle of change. So this is endless process, and this is only going to make any company survive and grow. If this is not being followed by any company, whether it is a largest company of the world like in, of India, like Hindustan Motors or the small company, they'll vanish if they don't follow the change management. Now comes how to put in practice the lean. The biggest challenge is that, so theoretically, everything is good, but the most tough task is putting the lean management practice is that. So based on my experiences and practices, a validated model. What should be sequence of change? This I have done practice in more than 40 SMEs and based on that experiences under Indian conditions, these are the changes required. This is the model, summarized model. 
the lean manufacturing basically the purpose is to improve the process performance and business performance the process performance is three most important quality price and delivery what customer is looking for a good quality product delivered just in time at a competitive price and what a business is looking for reduce costs so that their profit margins are increased at the same time once it becomes competitive good quality competitive price then the demand of your product your market share increases so this is the outcome required from any manufacturing industry the process has to produce good quality product at competitive price just in time and the business wants lower cost more profit margins and more turnover so how it can be done what changes are required so the left side if you see the people competence first thing what i believe and practice it who is going to bring the change the only people so they must learn what need to be changed they must learn the so one question is yeah i'm just after this model is there completed right so the people competence has to be improved then your process improvement has to be made so that it is capable to deliver what customer wants then workplace has to be improved by 5s your equipment availability has to be improved and finally the culture has to be changed so this is the model in the these five areas changes are done improvements are done now one question has come i just respond to that somebody has asked i mean is it possible to implement for company who do not manufacturing big quantity of products yes it's not question of quantity what philosophy you are following even the small companies small quantity they have all always a scope for making their products better which can be produced in lesser time with lesser resources with lesser material with lesser machines in fact they equally need lean like a big company because their profit margins are very very thin so by applying lean they can make it wider profit margin so it doesn't mean that only big companies in a bigger quantity they can produce the lean so this is the way how they can grow themselves even the smaller quantity they can increase their profit margins i hope the question is answered okay if any any further doubt you can type it i'll respond to that so as i explained this is the strategy for lean implementation because we have to meet the customer requirements we have to meet the company's business requirement to that the people process workplace equipment and culture has to be changed for the better and various techniques used are the various tools are used so the kaizen these five areas practically for sme which need to be changed for making things better so how what is the framework what is required first thing as i told the if you see the lean transformer first question the top management the commitment commitment means the top management must be fully convinced and make it sure that it is implemented without the commitment nothing will happen so the commitment can be built by how it is expressed lean awareness whole company must be aware about the lean what it is there how it is to be done this is done by through the awareness workshop then the change agent in every company there has to be a person who can drive the change under the guidance of a lean expert the third is lean promotion organizational lpo a process a system a team has to be created which will continuously implement plan implement monitor the lean transformation in the company so this is these are the three requirements for the commitment then once commitment is made the lean begins that diagnostic study we must know where we are 
and then set a target where we want to be. The gap has to fill up. How it is? Diagnostic study is conducted, as I explained earlier. While stream mapping is one of the powerful tools, which helps to find out what are the constraints in the system, what are the problems faced by the company. So, so those problems becomes a project for improvement. So for each project, there has to be a team, cross-functional team, the people involved. They should be. So a team has to be formed, they will work on the team, plan is made. Yeah, one question has come. Could you please explain culture change? Very nice question. And in fact, we need a change in the culture. I just give the current example. Demonetization. One of the solutions for a cashless economy is using the electronic media and the other tools. So a culture has to be created. Even I personally feel I used to carry debit card in my purse. But most of the time I was using the cash along with the debit card cash. So a culture change after this demonetization started. I'm hardly using any cash. Wherever the possibility is there, I'm using a debit card. So by this way, maybe after a few months, maybe a couple of years, there will be a culture change of cashless economy. So this is the way the habit need to be changed. That becomes a culture. Maybe after a few years, uh, India may become a cashless economy. So this is a change from a cash culture to the cashless culture. How it is possible just by getting opportunity. Opportunity comes by a crisis. A crisis has come, a burning platform created, which is accompanying everybody. And after a few months, few years, we'll feel more comfortable with the cashless transaction than carrying the cash. So this is the right current example of the culture chain. The same way, what is it? Culture is required in the company. People must see themselves what are the problems in the company. People, without asking anybody, they should learn and they should solve the problem of the company. There is no need of any superior or the boss to tell this has to be solved. So this is a culture change. Like Swachh Bharat, even small children now, they are aware about that any field should not be spread anywhere. So a cultural change is going, taking place in the company, in the country. The same way a culture of continuous improvement has to build in the company. And this has to begin by changing the attitude, changing the competence of the people, improving the competence and the most important leaders behavior. They must set example of better way of working. Then only a culture change can happen. And the question is, can you please share any example of diagnostic study? Yes, <clears throat> I'm just giving one example. Suppose you are producing, for example, nuts and in your company, nuts and bolt fastener in your company. And you are continuously measuring what is the defect rate Say, for example, miss, you are getting 5% getting rejected. Once you are continuously monitoring, some month it comes 6%, some month it is 5%, some month 4%. Then, then you study what is the benchmark in other industry. You find the maximum 2% should be rejection in such kind of companies. So compared to 2% benchmark in the company, your is coming three months, three percent, four percent, five percent. It means there is some problem in your process. So now you come to know that my rejection rate is three percent higher than the normal benchmark practiced by the company. So you 
diagnose the problem there is some problem in my production process then you take up a project of a kaizen then plan do check act you collect all the data of all the operations performed in the making in nuts and bolts and figure out at which machine it is causing so this way you are finding that one particular die the machine x is causing high rejection so once you come to know that the cause and change the die improve the die and rejection rate comes down so this is a diagnostic study is trying to find out what is the root cause of problem <coughs> yeah now this is a diagnostic study there are tools are needed as I explained the value stream mapping for the system then diagnostic study there yy analysis cause and effect diagram many techniques are there which need to be learned by the people once you come to know these are the problems then third step comes skill development ultimately consultant is not going to improve the people who are touching the process operating the process they are going to do so how to improve it they need a proper knowledge skill and attitude so the third most important thing is that means the training how they can do it by the experts they must be trained on the least tools and technique how to solve the problem how to work in the team so this training is going to develop knowledge skill and attitude which we call it competence or ability of the operators of your company they must develop it and once they have skilled in that then they should take up the improvement project which we have identified in diagnostic study and each project is taken as a problem solving project and project by project improvements are made all the tools they have learned through application of those tools they solve the problem and improve the process performance and once the processes becomes perfect finally we have to build a culture automatically where the culture is that people start thinking themselves they try to find out problem without asking anybody they try to solve it it becomes a culture of the company to change it and it has to begin from the lean leadership here the lean leadership doesn't mean the only ceo everybody is lean leader for his team his or her team so the concept of lean leadership is learned by the people the same way the lean is not only for the manufacturing all office process must become lean applying the same principle and the very important aspect respect for the people the lean requires that people must be respected then only they can deliver their best result they can be involved <clears throat> here the role of hr human resource management is very important they have to inspire the people they have to motivate the people they have to make them competent so that they are involved so it becomes journey becomes continuous improvement because the excellence never exist excellence is dynamic target once a culture is created it becomes lean enterprise the whole company starts thinking in continuous improvement mode and it goes on improve <clears throat> so the five step process i i explained earlier in the framework commitment diagnosis learning improvement and lean culture what is that first it has to begin for the desire to change unless the top man ceo has got a desire to change nothing will happen so that comes from the commitment is taking a pledge binding oneself morally dedicated to it cause or obliged to take certain action the best example of dedicate commitment is our soldiers our defense personnel they are showing the commitment for them the security of the country is the most important than their own personal life or players they are committed they try to put their best to win the so that kind of commitment is required in the organization commitment means it has to be personally ceo has to be personally involved commitment cannot be delegated he has to set the targets and see that they are met 
Opponents and import change agent to implement the lean program finds a lean sensei a coach provides resources to lean project teams goes to soft floor and see the improvements invest in the people the learning of lean knowledge and changes the culture of the organization so these are some critical tasks which is the essential part of commitment must be exhibited by the ceo of the company And the question is, what is the key difference between root cause analysis and diagnostic study? Yeah, the diagnostic studies is done to identify the first the problem at macro level, and then go deep in the diagnostic in the root cause. I just give example. Personally, suppose I want to improve my health. What is the first thing I should do? Then. I should go for the comprehensive health checkup and go to doctor, take appointment in comprehensive health checkup. What doctor does? Physician. Every part of our system is checked. And in that system, they found that my cardiac system is weak. Some some problem in the heart, right? Cholesterol is high. So the now the second stage. Is there means it is a problem solved. Um, diagnostic study is done that cardiac system is weak. Some problem is there. Now you identify the the second phase start to find out the root cause. Why it is having some problems, cholesterol high. The second level of problem solving starts. First, all data is collected about our cardiac system. Then finally, why the Cholesterol level is high. Is it because of the diet or because of the lifestyle? Finally, the doctor comes with a lot of study and collecting data. It is that my food habits are not proper and recommends these are the medicines to bring it to normal. And these are the preventive action you have to take a measure so that again cholesterol level doesn't go. So this is one of the example what I gave you for diagnosing. Diagnosing the problem and reaching to the root cause so that you can get the proper solution. I hope it is clear. So here, the change agent is a very important point in every company, in every department. I have seen I have in the bigger company, smaller company, there is some person who can get anything done. He takes every work is positively. He takes responsibility as a pleasure, not as a burden. So a person should be picked by the CEO of the company. He should be assigned the job to bring the change in the company under the guidance of a lean sensei who can make the things happen, who has got a positive attitude, competence, and empowered by the management and action. So this is success of lean transformation depends on of the Key factors is the change in it. Then find a sensei. Sensei means is Japanese word. It means coach. It is a consultant is very limited meaning, but the coach is a guru. So who is a guru, guide, teacher to the people? It's very important to find a correct guru who can. <coughs> help the people to come to the level of transformation, who can motivate the people to learn, who can diagnose help in diagnosing the problem, who can teach how to solve the problems by training, hand holding, coaching, mentoring. So this is very, very important. So what to change? Second step is that the, through the diagnosis only, we can come to know what to change. As you see, in the circle, bigger circle, a lot of dots are there. Each dot is representing a problem. There are so many problems are in every company you will find, whether it is a big company or small company, good company or bad company. So some problems are selected by the boss or the people and they try to solve. So this is the not, not the right approach. The lean approach says we must take a value stream just like on the path. The problems, all the resources must be put on that solving the problems on particular value stream so that we start getting results 
instead of just taking the randomly in the previous script. This is not going to help the company in the bottom line. So this is the approach. It is called a value stream. Each value stream has to be taken. The problem has to be selected so, so that we start getting better results. This is the lean approach. So reconfiguring your process into value stream. Randomly in the chaotic condition, all the process must be aligned. Separate value stream has to be created in right direction and each value stream has to be improved. So in a manufacturing industry, we can broadly classify in the various value streams like the production value stream, provision value stream is which is involved in the marketing of the product, consumption value stream, how the product is used by the customer. Then two most important supporting value stream or product development value stream. Today, every customer wants something new. So whether it is small company or big company, they have to invest time and effort and money in the product development because that is going to help them to come out with new products. And the same way service process value stream like purchasing, accounts, finance, HR, these are the called service processes for the company they should support. So the various value streams can be created and each value stream has to be continuously improved. It is not just only production, all supporting value streams must be extended continuously to support the value stream. So diagnostic tool I mentioned earlier is the value stream mapping is one of the very famous tool which is trying to find out where is the constraint which is causing the waste. So here a structured workshop is there how it is done. The first we have to map the current state as is condition how the company is doing performing the current operations then set a target and decide what will be my company's value stream after 12 months or 24 months. So the gap has to be filled up by taking up the projects and making a plan for improvement and then finally implementing project by project this way. This is a typical value stream map because three most important things are the information flow, material flow and the how long it takes timeline. So the information flows from customer to the supply in the reverse direction where the material flows from the on the soft floor from the purchaser end to the customer end and finally the important is all the time is spent during whole process from order to delivery is recorded and it must be minimized. How it can be minimized? By solving the problems which are working as a roadblock. So this way the value stream mapping helps to identify the problems. This is a typical map, the future state map and finally value stream mapping diagnostic study we try to find out the problems and make a schedule for the improvement and project teams they are trained and they go on making improvement. One question has come which is the best way of to change the culture? Yeah, it's, question is very simple, but answer is very vast. I don't know which is the best way, but it has to begin from the top. If the leadership first, any change, any cultural change has to begin from the top, the leader, then everybody would fall. Like if I want that my children do not smoke and I myself is a chain smoker. So how to bring that change of no smoking in my family? First I have to spot, stop smoking and be having in healthy way. Then only I can bring a change in my family. The same way the leadership has to begin, learn and begin the best practices and then ask the people to follow it. That is one of the best ways to change the culture in my opinion. Okay, 
So the change has to begin. Learn about Lee. Means basically internally transformation is taken. First thing, the people must know why I am doing it. The purpose should be clear because the lean has to be done for the survival and growth of company. Company includes everybody. Every employee will grow, company will grow, country will grow, society will grow. The purpose is the continuous growth. <coughs> then where to bring the change? By diagnostic study, we are trying to identify these are the burning issues, these are the critical areas, these are the problem area that need to be changed. Then what to change? Then we need to be more specific as I gave examples earlier. First, the macro level, we come to know where to change. The micro level, each project has to be taken, what need to be changed. First, we have to identify the root cause and then develop solution, then how to change implementing solution countermeasures to the root cause. So there are various tools are required and this is a sequence of bringing change. So the people have to learn why tools, where tools, what tools and how tools. So this is a main task of Lean Sensei or the coach to teach the people various techniques to address these issues. What to learn? Nowadays you must have heard about Six Sigma also. The Lean and Six Sigma is identified as one of the very good combination of it. Six Sigma is a more statistical approach. Statistics is also required to help the identify the problem, prioritize the problem. A lean is the elimination of waste. So the various tools are there as per the maturity of the company and need of the company. So the tools are being taught to the people and, and they are applied under the guidance of them. It is called learning by doing. Here, less classroom training, more on the software, more application. So learning by doing, learning by sharing is the approach for improving the competence of people. Now the next step, making change happen. How to make change happen? <clears throat> from the value stream mapping, we try to find out what are the problems and from the problems we make a project team so we make a schedule for next 12 months what projects will be taken up to improve the process performance of the company and the improvement plan is made and according to the plan projects are allotted improvements are made project by project every project has a problem solving project it is done by multidisciplinary team cross-functional teams and the objective of every project is to solve the problem by eliminating waste. And every project should have a starting and completion date. It should not be unended. There must be okay three months, four months, five months, depending on the complexity of the problem. It must be completed within the given time. So what is a problem? Problem is basically, let's see mathematically, it is a gap between a target and actual. It is undesirable default. So severity of problem depends on the gap. More the gap, more the problem. I gave the example of a cholesterol. Higher the cholesterol level, more severe the problem than the norms. So any process where defect rate is very high compared to the universal benchmark, it means problem is more severe. So the diagnostic study helps to quantify the problem and its severity. So how the improvement is done? It is known as Deming cycle. Which was, it was developed by Shewart, his guru. It means any problem can be solved in the four phases. Plan, do, check, act. So PDCA is the Kaizen. In the Kaizen, plan, do, check, act is done. In Lean Six, in six Sigma, it is called define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. It is nothing but a modified form of PDCA. How it is done? Project team is there. First, they try to find out the data and plan how to make it improvement. Then implement the plan that is a do phase. And then C is the check whether everything is result is coming as per the plan. Things are going in order. If it is not going, then the A comes adjust or act. So the PDCA is the four phase journey. 
and teams are done, Kaizen events and review counseling. So this is the way how project is implemented. So plan phase addresses what, why and how. Defining the problem, analyzing the problem, identification of the root cause, then planning countermeasure solution. This is the plan activity. And once plan is made, do phase is putting plan into practice and then checking whether our improvement changes are giving the desired result or not. And finally, if everything is in order, that is standardized. If it is not, results are not coming as per the plan, then further modification is done in the plan to get the desired. So this is a PDCA. This is the way how improvements are being done in any company. So how it is done, already we have explained the gap. Basically, the gap has to fill up by PDC activity to achieve the higher performance level as shown in this diagram. So here, again, very big misunderstanding about the problem. The problem is not the problem. Actually, the problem is attitude of the people about the problem. Again comes that mindset is the problem people take problem as a fact of life and they must learn technique to solve the problem i'm just giving the current example no i'm not a pro or anti demonetization what is happening we are seeing demonetization and experiment has begun in the country with a good intention but what is happening that everybody is opposing it. Instead of that, you see here, the problem is attitude of the people. Nobody is coming out with the solution to the problem rather than the attitudinal problem. So the problem is that always the mindset of the people that need to be changed. And problem is a fact of life. It has to be dealt with the latest knowledge. So ultimate result of lean, if you just put it, it, this simplifies what it reduces first thing defects by improving the your process performance reduces lead time the lesser lead time means less inventory less working capital less capital cost reduces cost by elimination of waste reduces inventory reduces space requirement for the production and overall the waste so this is the reduction this reflects on your balance sheet makes your products better, more competitive, less costlier, and more profitable. So for how it improves, it improves the productivity of your process, improves customer satisfaction, increases capacity, it's called a hidden factory within your factory is discovered. With the same resources, you can produce more. It makes your company more responsive with the faster speed, improves quality, improves profitability, so these are the benefits of lean. Just I am giving a small case study how it has helped in the improving the productivity of a small company which is making these are the banjos used in the lubrication system of any car or the automobile. So which has got a hole through which the lubricants are passed to the moving particles, components. A company, this is the real case study during my lean implementation. It is the product is called a banjo, which is made from the bright bars and machine <coughs> in the automatic machines and the CNC machines. There was a real problem of the company. These are the actual data, the 2010 the customer requirement are much more than 4,000 and the company was able to do maximum 3,000 pieces per day. It was not able to meet the customer demand. So we took up as a lean project to improve the productivity without adding any capital costs. So these are the various operations, bright bars are used and the various step rub ball turning, CNC ball turning, facing, drilling and grooving, facing and grooving, magnet, magnet testing and siphoning. These were the operations used in it. So study was made because the order was there and company was not able to utilize the customer demand. 
so the calculations were made means to make the requirement of customer every 18 second one piece must be produced so a project was selected and the five phase journey define measure analyze improve control a schedule was made one two three four five months it must be completed the first thing the defining the problem what was the gap gap was their demand was 4000 pieces but company was able to produce maximum 3020 so now the cycle time of each operation was collected a data was collected and various cycle time in the machines 22 and a half 20 seconds 22.5 and 25 seconds this way and there was a requirement of it. the company must produce each operation must each step within 18 seconds so a graph was drawn if you just see the demand rate was 18 seconds but it was taking more than that if it is more than that means it means company cannot meet the customer demand rate so what need to be done these are the projects problems identified below the tag time demand rate line above these are the problems they must be brought below 18 seconds then only it is possible so <clears throat> it, a detailed study was made and what are the changes required in each operation was identified the experts of the processes and target was set this must be brought within next few months within 18 seconds improvements were made in the first attempt all the processes came under finishing and grooving only means that was up to 20 seconds 25 seconds that was that was the only problem which could not address the complete <coughs> production so once that is achieved we, we, it was brought below 20 seconds and then the final phase control was made means whatever the improvements we have made we must hold again that is the purpose of it for that standardization was made education and training was given to the people reward and recognition for better performance was introduced and the lean management system was introduced so that they can continuously improve the productivity by reducing the cycle time using the same techniques so this way project was finished in five phases and the ultimate result was there which was maximum cycle time in one operation was 25 seconds it was brought down to 20 seconds productivity from 184 units per hour increased to 242 units improvement 30 percent improvement in the productivity and sale with the same manpower same resources could be achieved just applying the lean methodology diagnostic study and problem solving so the fifth phase is how to sustain the chain leadership and culture is from the lean perspective the leaders are classified three categories dictator style empowerment style and lean style so there is a change required in the leadership style what is a dictator style do it my way the big boss he says he gives instruction and gives everyone to just do in this way no transfer of responsibility it is totally command and control this was the british system which ruled once whole world was a command and control system so still many companies you will find the bureaucratic system you will find and there we can see the result many companies are still working in a dictator's style the next one in 1980s a goal was set by the big boss and every employee was asked to achieve the goal the way they want to do it this was a very popular it called empowerment style during in 1980s so what happened many companies different kind of culture in different departments started emerging that lost the focus so it was realized by the managing expert this is not the right way so empowerment style also failed then came the lean leadership style that says follow me and we'll figure out together so this is the lean leadership so is a totally different is a very different way lean leader by setting the vision they set a vision for the future and 
then build a system and perfect process that delegates responsibility, cascades responsibility, and how the leader influences by example. Means earlier also I emphasized on the cultural change. The leadership has to set example. He has to become, he or she has to become more knowledgeable by getting the into messy details, by making their hands dirty, doing the improvement activities, by coaching and teaching through PDCA learning cycle and through question. So here, the lean leadership is basically, he has to, he or she has to set the example, learn it, do it, and then only ask the team, lead the team, let's do it jointly. So this is the big changes required in the leadership. They have to learn and they have to change themselves. Then only it is possible. The culture is what? Somebody asked the question how to change the culture. The tools, techniques, methods, processes, we can learn it. Even hire a consultant, we can buy a lot of control equipment. But we cannot buy behaviors, mindset, assumptions, habits, unwritten rules and the culture of a company. It's not available in the market. So a lot of people, they feel just by learning tools, we can improve. They are totally wrong. Because means ultimately, the, that is the only tip of iceberg. Here, the change in the mindset, behavior, assumption of people, it requires time, it requires a lot of learning, it requires a lot of training, it requires a lot of practice. So the cultural change has to take place within the our mind within our head where are the tools techniques can be put on the practice so this is the most important aspect that we have to change our behavior that comes by our knowledge that comes by our beliefs changing the belief so the lean is the beginning i told it is a thinking has to change thinking will change everything so that has to start from change in this thing now what is a lean mindset how to change it First thing, throw out all your fixed ideas about how to do things. Last 60, 70 years, what has been done in the country, we have to throw it out to make a new country. The same way, last 30, 40 years means whatever time past we have done. We have to change out or throw out our old habits and old methods of doing things. Think of how the new method will work, not on how it won't work. Here, this is the biggest problem in the company's field. Anything new you start, they'll say it is not possible here. Instead of that, it is not possible here. It has to come how to make this possible in our company. That is the basic changes required. Don't accept excuses. There should not be any excuse for delaying or not implementing. Don't seek perfection. Let's not feel that by lean, I'll become the best company in the world. I'll become like a Toyota. So we let 5%, 10%, 50% positive improvement, let it begin. So don't be disappointed. Any little improvement that is going to help you, a bigger improvement in the future. Correct mistakes the moment they are found. So it should not be delayed. Any problem happens immediately, it should be solved. Ten people's ideas are better than one person. It means that one person's command and control is not required. Here the teamwork of ten persons, this is one of the very important aspect of lean. Here the whole team has team has to work. They have to brainstorm and find a collectively a better solution. So improvement has got no limits. Sky is the limit. There is no ultimate excellence. So it has to continuously grow up. So this kind of mindset has to be brought in the people instead of opposing this is not possible we have to take a new look how to make it possible this is required the current culture if you just see most of the companies there are two persons growing in the positive direction many persons are in the opposing it and most of the people are they are just sitting right they are just indifferent and enjoying what their indifference so this is the culture of most of the companies in the country and what is the lean culture that everybody is aligned, everybody is rowing in the same direction, putting effort for the continuous improvement. So this is the basic shift in the culture required. This 
the cultures are means making improvement culture, problem solving culture, addressing issues, so lean culture and means the culture change can be brought by making improvement by resolving the problem faced in the company, addressing the issues and for this we people need to learn various tools and apply this way only the culture has can be changed. So somebody asked how to change the culture, putting principles in action that will change the culture. So whatever we have learned, we have to put in practice. Once it put in practice, positive result will come and continuously performance will improve. So this is the way of culture by putting the practice. Now, whatever little knowledge I have, I have shared with all people. Now it is your time to make a plan for action plan for your company. First thing, if you want to really adopt lean, trans, implement lean your company, you should be very clear. First thing is that lean awareness trend. That is changes the mindset of the people. You have to fix a date when you want to make your people understand what is in it and put one person responsible, maybe yourself or any or other senior manager make a response. Responsibility must be delegated and the start and finish date must be there. When, by when all employees will be aware about it. Then second comes diagnostic study of your process must be done to identify the problem. There must be a date, start date, finish date and the responsible person to get it done. Then the lean training. Once the problems are identified, the people project team should be formed and they should be trained. Again, you need a date, start and finish date and a person to coordinate. Then the Kaizen projects, various projects, when they should start, when they should finish and the person's response. 5S implementation, TPM implementation, employee involvement. So these are the areas which must be addressed and there has to be a beginning and end for doing that task and a person. This way a practical action plan has to be made and which has to be put in practice for bringing change in your company. So with this I conclude and the philosopher says we cannot become what we want to be just by remaining what we are. So again, the whole game is process of change. If I want to improve, I cannot improve unless I change myself. Just remaining a status quo, they cannot be improved. So I'm sure that every company has got a vision and without vision, you cannot survive, you cannot grow. And to attain that survival and growth vision, you have to change what you have to change in the beginning, the people their knowledge, their skills, their mindset. What need to be changed? The role of leadership. What else to be changed? Process system of your company that need to be changed. That will only take you to match with the global best and without global competitiveness, no company can survive. Now it is no protection is going to be provided by any country, it is a WTO compulsion. There has to be same level playing field for every country and under this one, the lean manufacturing is one of the most effective, well-proven, globally recognized methodology which can be applied in any small or big company if they want to become grow. You can give your feedback by mail to Tata Steel and any more question, if you are having, you can ask me or you can mail later on. I'll be glad to reply. Thank you.